This is episode 36 of the Just Ask Joey podcast. And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? Just ask Joey. Hello, and welcome to the Just Ask Joey podcast. I'm your host, Joey. This is the only place on the internet where a former idiot answers your questions to help you either avoid idiocy or get over your idiocy. Today, I'm very excited to bring a podcast to you that is, I think, extremely relevant. It is using a current HBO show and combining it with social psychology and what we do. So today's topic. Aren't we all just like Nasir Khan? Are we? So for those of you that are not familiar with the show, The Night Of, they are six episodes into an eight-episode series. What's kind of They call it a limited series, but it's really just a mini-series. I don't know what the limited series... I don't get that. Maybe it's a British thing because it's a BBC thing. I don't know. Anyways, so I'm going to try to like talk about this show without totally killing it for you if you haven't already read it if you haven't already if you haven't already seen it so the idea is this kid Nasir Khan nickname Nas meets this chick and the night he meets this chick the night of he meets this chick she ends up dead he gets arrested for it things don't look good but things also look like he didn't do it So the show is basically just them kind of going through and figuring out, did he do it? Did he not do it? But I guess what they do in New York is when you're going through trial, if you can't post bail or there is no bail, like in this case, they put you at Rikers, which is a prison. So I can't imagine going through trial and having to do it at an actual prison. So you're in this show, and I don't know if this is realistic or not, but he's mixed in with dudes that are like lifers that are in there forever, that have been in there forever. So, not a great mix. But anyways, so what you start seeing is this kid starts out as a really nice, humble, sweet college kid and gets himself into obviously a jacked up situation, may or may not have done what they're accusing him of. We don't know that yet. And then you see this evolution and obviously you're speeding up time. Like you're like I didn't get into the show until like week four. So I've like seen this whole progression of, of Nas Khan in like a two and a half week period. So, but you're watching this progression from this nice college kid and you're watching him morph into an inmate. He goes from nice clean cut kid, uh, he shaves his head. Nothing wrong with shaving your head. Not a good look in court, but nothing wrong with shaving your head. To getting knuckle tattoos, which is pretty hardcore. I mean, knuckles and neck, it's kind of a it's kind of close. I don't you're 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 kind of pushing your your limits of what you're gonna be able to do later in life if you get a tattoo on your neck or your knuckles. I'm just saying. So he's going through trial and he has tattoos, he's got prison tattoos now, knuckles, shoulder or arm or something like that. I, I I'm sure the neck's next. He starts smuggling drugs, he starts fighting and beating the hell out of people um and then he starts smoking crack so maybe after you get sentenced to life in prison maybe then you start smoking crack but i'm pretty sure during the process smoking crack is probably not a great idea this is just me uh i'm not a legal counsel so don't take my word for it but it's not a good look so i'm sitting there watching this show watching this dude just morph into this other person morph into this person that he's not is basically the point of it. And I started thinking, isn't that just like us? I don't think that any of us are really bad people. There are some people that are effed up, but you you know, whatever. There's some people that are really, really good, and there's some people that are really, really bad. But for the most part, people are generally good people. They may not say good things. They may not necessarily do good things. But when you get down one-on-one with somebody, they're generally a good person. There's generally a reason why they act the way they do or don't act the way they do or whatever. But we're generally pretty good. Yet, we do some pretty effed up stuff. 
And I'm not saying this as a, hey, you guys do effed up stuff. I'm saying like, I know f- with me, and I know I'm not alone in this, that when I did this, the stupidest stuff that I've done, it's it's a situation where I'm being pulled, or I'm a, not being pulled, I'm allowing to be pulled out of kind of my my me zone, if that makes sense. It's, I'm not stable enough to be in a situation where I don't get swayed one way or the other. You know, it's like being a wave in the ocean. Whatever way the, whatever way the wind blows is where the wave goes. So you may not, this is like an extreme case, but you may not be a crack smoker, but you're around a group of guys that are some of your friends and they're smoking crack. All of a sudden you're a crack smoker. You may not be a drunk driver. You may be in a situation though when you're at a bar and your buddies are bugging you, man, give us a ride home, give us a ride home, want our money for a cab, blah, blah, blah. All of a sudden you're a drunk driver and God forbid something bad happens, you could be a murderer just from, you're going from not a drunk driver, have never done it, to you're too buzzed to drive, but your friends are bugging you to drive when you'd rather wait and you're driving home and you crash and you kill somebody and then you're a murderer. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. You're just not grounded in who you are enough to withstand the wind. And I know I said it in the last podcast, you want to be a tree, but you're really just a leaf. You got no roots. There's nothing grounded. So when the wind comes up, you're gone. And to me, I feel like we are just like Nasir Khan. We allow ourselves to be in situations that pull us away from who we really are in a bad way. I also feel that you can pull yourself into a better position. James Aldister says brilliantly that you really are the average of the five people you surround yourself with. But if you're in a situation like Nasir Khan and you're in prison, you have to be strong enough to separate yourself and recognize the crap that you could get pulled into. You have to be able to be strong enough that even if you're not around the people you want to be around with all the time, that you don't get pulled into the BS of whatever group you're involved with. Now, I don't love talking about this, but it it fits this. I know when I was when I was in I had to be an individual because I did not want to get pulled into the BS. I didn't want to be in a white supremacist gang. I didn't want to get a freaking SS tattoo or a swastika tattoo. I didn't want to fight Mexicans just because I'm white and they're Mexicans. I didn't want to fight blacks just because they're black and I'm white. I didn't want to do any of that stuff. I didn't want to get involved in the drug thing. I didn't want to get involved in the smuggling thing. None of that stuff. So I didn't. And it worked out. I think you get into situations where you feel you have to do something. But if you just kind of stand your ground, I think people for the most part, if you're cool with being by yourself, people are okay with you being by yourself. But you have to establish that. And you can't, like, uh, I can't even stress enough, you can't let it pull you out of your, your, who you are. Now, I do absolutely believe that if you're around people long enough, you're going to get, you're going to get pulled in. Like if you did like a 10 year term in prison, it's going to be pretty freaking hard to find a group of people that you can latch on with. If you are, if you hang out with a bunch of shitheads, you may not be a shithead, but the more you hang out with them, the more things are just going to come up. And once you do one little thing that's kind of shithead-like, you're gone. You're a shithead because you hang out with shitheads. And it's just, it's these little moments in time that could just change everything. Like how many of you guys have been into a, how many of you guys have punched somebody in the face? There are people that get into fights that punch somebody in the face and they fall back, hit their head and die you're a murderer. It's it's moments, it's seconds. It's God, I wrote I wrote about this in my book. Like every single person in prison has a 2 or 3 second window that changed their life forever. 
two or three seconds. Now, granted, things may have built up to those two or three seconds, but life comes down to just moments, and they can either be really, really good, or they can be really, really bad. And if you set yourself up for bad, chances are you will eventually get to bad. And if you set yourself up for good, eventually you will set yourself up for good. I have no idea what's going to happen in this TV show. But I do see where this is going. He is not a criminal at the beginning, episode one. He is now a full-on dope smuggling, crack smoking, fighting. He might hook up with a dude prisoner. He is a, a convict in prison, even though he's not really a convict yet. I think he's going to do something in prison. And even if he gets off on the case that he's being tried for, I think he's going to pull a charge in prison and something's going to happen. Like it's going to, he's going to become a prisoner without even becoming, without even really becoming a prisoner. And that's what we all do. That's how we become drunk drivers. That's how we become thieves. That's how we become cheaters. That's how we become liars because we just, we don't ground ourselves enough and we don't, do the day-to-day living with purpose, with integrity. We just go, I'm a good person. I'm a nice guy. I'm a good this. I'm a good that. But if you really look at your actions and what you do, are the actions that you're taking, do they show other people that you're good at this or good at that or a good this or a good that? Probably not. Do you get dragged off? Like, Just look at the last couple weeks of your life. Do you look back and find moments where you don't like what you see? Oh, man, I hate how drunk I got. Oh, I hate how I screamed at my kids. Oh, I hate how, whatever, I got high. I hate how I stole that whatever from work. Look at the moments where you get Pulled out of who you are. Look back at the moments of the last couple weeks or the last couple months and go, where do I not like myself? That's what you need to work on. You need to go through your day with purpose. When you wake up, what kind of father do I want to be? Or mother? What kind of husband do I want to be? Or wife? What kind of employee do I want to be? What kind of an example do I want to be for the people around me? And Live your life with purpose and you won't have those moments where you get pulled out of yourself. You won't be Nasir Khan going from nice college kid to freaking train wreck crack smoker in prison. And he's not even convicted yet. What the hell is going to happen if he gets convicted? So don't be that person that just floats with the breeze. Be the person that is grounded. Be the person that's the tree. That's how you go through life without regrets. Is you don't allow yourself situations to regret. Live with purpose. Write down who you want to be. Look at it in the morning. Whatever your different roles are in your life. What kind of a what kind of a kid do you want to be? What kind of a grandson, granddaughter do you want to be? What kind of a husband? What kind of a worker? Write that out and look at it. And then look at what you do and see if you're able to be pulled out from who you are, from who you want to be. Because you get pulled out from who you want to be enough and you're not that person anymore. You're the person you don't want to be. And nobody wants to be that. I'll see you guys soon. And she was like, and he was like, and we was like, Let's go!